Hello and welcome to a new session uh, for the online course on introduction to embedded system design. In this session we are going to look at two aspects, one is to increase our capability of the microcontroller to interact with the outside world through interactions including displaying numbers. Till now we have seen how we can use the microcontroller to turn LEDs on and off. But an LED can only give you binary information, something is on, something is off. But if you would like the microcontroller to show you numbers or other information, we would have to use a display device such as a 7 segment display. Of course, we can also use a liquid crystal display and other graphics displays which we will come to in a later uh, lecture. But in this uh, lecture, we are going to see how we can connect a single 7 segment display. For the reason that it is easy to connect a single 7 segment display or a couple of 7 segment displays to a microcontroller, but as the number of 7 segment displays increases, it would not be possible to connect to large number of 7 segment displays or large number of LEDs to a microcontroller without uh, increasing the complexity from the software side. Right now, we are going to look at how we can connect a single 7 segment digit display. Now, as you know in our electronic component inventory which we had shared with you earlier and I hope you are able to get your hands on a 4 digit 7 segment display, we are you going to use the same 4 digit 7 segment display in our experiment, but we are only going to enable only one of the digits. In a subsequent uh, lecture, we will show how we can control a 4 digit or for that matter a larger digit larger number of digits uh, display, but let us begin with uh, our interactions here today on how to display information on a single 7 segment uh, LED display. We call this uh, experiment, we call this exercise hello SSD because we are talking to a 7 segment display. Uh, as we have seen in the past, uh, 7 segment displays are of two types, one can be called as common cathode or so common cathode will be here we have uh, the display LEDs this will be common cathode and then you would have the 8 uh, segment pins A, B up to D P and this is A, B, C, D, E, F, G and here you have D P. Similarly, you can also have a common anode. So, now the common part is the common anode and you have the same display with the decimal point and you have a to D P. You can choose either of these displays, in our case we have a, a common cathode 7 segment display. Now, let us see how we can uh, interface it to our uh, MSP430 microcontroller using our MSP430 lunch box. The uh, connection to a 7 segment display is not very different from connecting a microcontroller to a LED. It is just that a 7 segment display consists of 8 LEDs. So, it is just a matter of connecting 8 pins to a single 7 segment display and turning appropriate segments on and off so that you can display the number that you wish. In our exercise, uh, we what we are doing is we are connecting one switch to one of the uh, port pins and we are connecting 8 pins of the microcontroller to the 8 pins of the 7 segment display and each time we press and release a button, each time we press and release that switch, it will count uh, the value from count going from 0, 1, 2 up to the maximum value. We are showing the count in a hexadecimal fashion, which means we can display numbers from 0 to f, 0 to 9 and then a, b up to f. So, this is what we are going to do in this uh, exercise. 
So, let me uh, draw a sort of block diagram. Here is my MSP430 microcontroller. Here is my switch connected to a pin, which happens to be P2.3 in a pull up mode. And the port 1 pins, P1 pins, all 8 of them are being used to connect to the 7 segment display with appropriate current limiting resistors. And because this is a common cathode display, we are going to ground the common cathode pin of the 7 segment display. Of course, in this exercise, we do not have a single digit, we have 4 digits. <coughs> this is the Fritzing diagram for the uh, arrangement. Here we see our uh, lunch box, here we see our breadboard and on to our breadboard we have a four digit display, but as you see only one digit is being used. Uh, this uh, seven segment display as you see here, it has um, digit 1, digit 2, digit uh, 3 somewhere and digit 4, here digit 3 and digit 4. These are the common uh, pins of each of these displays and then you have A, B, C, D, E, F, G and D, P. <coughs> we are going to connect all the uh, 8 uh, segments A through D P and then we are going to only use one of the uh, digit uh, common pins as we see in here. It does not matter which one uh, you use, you can use first digit or the second digit. All you have to do is you have to ground that. Uh, digit uh, common part, common signal. Of course, we also connected two capacitors here. This is to uh, you know reduce uh, noise uh, in this case and then we have this switch here with a pull up resistor and we also have connected a capacitor here. So, as to uh, uh, debounce that although we are doing debounce uh, in the software also. So, let us see uh, what the code looks like. Now, here as we always seen that we include a msp430.h header file, then we have defined our uh, uh, switch to be on bit 3 and we actually connect it to port 2 bit 3. And here we have our uh, segments of the 7 segment display A through D P, they are connected to port 1.0 to port 1.7 pins. We have used uh, limiting resistors and if you choose a 1 kilo ohm or uh, value of resistor around that, that should be that should work fine. So, we, what we are doing is we are defining that the segment A of our display which is like this A, B, C, D, E, F, G and D, P that we have connected uh, segment A to bit 0 that means P 1.0, segment B to uh, P 1.1 and so on. Now, on this display what would you like to display? We would like to display numbers. Now, displaying no num numbers on a 7 segment display uh, one has to be very careful. For example, if you want to display 1 then or let us start with 0. So, display 0 will look like this. That means, all the digits except G and D P are off. This is A, B, C, D, E and F. When you want to display 1, then B and C are on. When you want to display 2, then you have A, B, D, E, G are on and so on. So, you have to create a map that for a given digit to display which of the segments need to be turned on. And that we have listed in this uh, sort of a hash define, where we are saying when we want to display 0, this D 0 means when we want to display 0, which of the segments should be on. So, we are saying segment A, B, C, D, E and F, nothing else. When we want to display 1, it is segment B and C as I mentioned and so on. And for this is mentioned for all the 16 digits from 0 to 9 and then A, B, C, D, E and F. Of course, uh, some of the uh, 
alphanumeric characters will appear in capitals and some will appear in small letters and one can see what they will look like by simulating these numbers on a graph paper. So, this part of the uh, code uh, tells you that when you want to display number which of the digit should be which of the segment should be turned on. Now, let us come to the uh, more definitions here we have a hash defined we are saying some sort of mask uh, we have created which is nothing but all the digits as you see except the decimal point we are not using the decimal point in this experiment. So, apart from that we have ORed all the bits. So, when I say segment A, when I say seg A and we have seen what is seg A, let us see here seg A is bit 0 and what is bit 0? Bit 0 is bit 0 is of all the 8 bits the 0th bit is 1 that is the meaning of bit 0. So, this is all 0, this is 0 to 7, 0, 0 all are 0 except 1. What is bit 1? Instead of the 0th bit, the 1th bit is on. This is 0 to 7, in this case it means this is 1 and these are all zeros. So, what we have done with that mask is we are oring all the uh, mask uh, values for segment A, B, C, D and so on and then we are we have uh, inverted that value all right we have toggled that value and we'll see why then we have created an array and this by the way uh, is an array which has 16 digits which have numbers from 0 to to display numbers from 0 to f and then we have defined a variable uh, we have defined it to be volatile uh, we have covered interrupts and we know that volatile is usually when you are interacting between a main program and an interrupt subroutine. In this case there was no need there is no need to declare this variable as volatile also it is not needed that this variable because it is outside the main uh, loop it appears to be declared as a global variable there is no need for this variable to be a global variable, but it does not hurt. Now, let us go inside now we have the main code and as we have always seen we have disabled the watchdog timer by oring the password with the bit required to stop the watchdog timer and then we write this bit combination into the watchdog timer control register that is the meaning of this statement. Once we have disabled this now once you reset this system it is going to what clock it is going to use for the CPU it is going to use the M clock and M clock will be derived out of DCO and the DCO will be working at 1.1 megahertz that we have not changed that is the reset state of MSP 430 and we are happy to use our lunch box at that rate. Then the first uh, uh, task we do is to define the direction of the port 1 bits we have defined all the bits as outputs from segment A to uh, the decimal point we are using all the bits. So, all the pins of port 1 we have defined as outputs and then for port 2 we have defined this bit as input by making it uh, 0. When we make it 0 it becomes input when we make it 1 it becomes output. <coughs> Once these two uh, uh, port directions are defined we have entered a infinite loop while 1 and from here we are going to remain into this loop for all the time. In this what we are doing we are waiting for a switch to be pressed. So, if this switch is not pressed you are going to wait the moment the switch is pressed you are going to go inside which means when the switch is not pressed you are going to get a logic 1 the moment the switch is pressed it is going to go here it is likely to bounce although we have put a capacitor outside. So, uh, the capacitor is uh, going to filter this out, but even if it does we debounce it because of this uh, delay loop. Then we wait for the switch to be released which means for all the time that it remains 0 you are going to wait here and then when it is released again it is likely to bounce and then after the delay it is going to go high and when the switch is released we are going to increment our variable i is going to count up the initial value of that variable was set to 0 okay? and the moment uh, you increment the count 
you want to check the bounds because we want to count only from 0 to f that is 0 to 15. If you keep on pressing at some point the value of i will become 16, but 16 is you cannot display here. So, you are going to reset the value of the variable to 0. So, we are checking that after incrementing if the value of the variable is more than 15, you set the value to 0. If not, you proceed and what do you do? You are going to output something on port 1 so as to display the number, but before that whatever was being previously displayed, you bring that value and and it with the demask and demask as you know is nothing but the or of all these bits inverted, which means it is going to disable those uh, LEDs which are on and it is going to or it with a number which is nothing but into an array which uh, the array name is uh, digits you are going to fetch a value depending upon the value of i depending upon the value of i that you see here you are going to fetch that byte from one of these uh, which will be one of these numbers and these numbers we have already seen are defined here here so you are going to fetch one of these values depending upon what is the value of i and that value you are going to output on port 1. So, what will it do? It will display that number and that number will remain as long as you do not press a switch because it is going to go back here and wait for you to press a switch. So, this uh, I uh, recommend that you uh, rebuild this code and download it into your uh, MSP430 lunchbox and play with it so that you understand what is happening, how the 7 segment display is working. You can play with the value of the resistors as I mentioned here. If we are using a 1k kilo ohm resistor, you can increase it. Uh, you should notice that the display intensity should go down. If you reduce it, you, sh you should see that the intensity of the display will increase and so on. So, I, I recommend that you uh, experiment with the setup uh, as much as you would like, so as to gain useful insight into how to use a 7 segment display for showing information from an embedded application to the outside world. Now, of course, if we have only one digit to display, it is not of much use and in real life you may want to display a larger number. Now, if you use a larger number, what options do we have here? We can use uh, two digits. So, on a MSP430, I can easily do that. I have two ports. So, on port 1, I can connect one display and port 2 I can connect another display provided I am not using an external crystal because external crystal takes up some of the uh, port pins. But if I want to do display numbers beyond this I have a problem because I do not have enough pins and the way to handle this is what we have covered in the previous lecture of using a multiplexing technique. In multiplexing technique we will use multiple displays and in our case we have access to a four digit display. So, we will connect port 1 to 4 digits and the segments, the digits will be controlled here, 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 here through NPN uh, transistor drivers from, uh, so this is NPN driver and of course, here we have resistors, see these are all the 8 pins, we have 8 resistors and 4 pins from port 2 we can use to control multiple uh, 7 segment displays, but the advantage that you get by controlling such a display using less number of pins you have to pay in some way and in this case the payment is through a software overhead which means at any given time only one digit is going to be on and how do you change it? This is the topic we are going to cover in a subsequent lecture how we can change from first to second to third to fourth back to first and keep on doing it in the background while your main loop can do other jobs of counting events and counting numbers and having them displayed on these four digit display. We will show you one uh, experiment using after we have covered some information about timers, we will show how we can use uh, the timer uh, infrastructure of MSV430 to multiplex multiple seven segment displays thereby reducing the usage of physical pins of MSP430 microcontroller. This is going to be a topic of a subsequent lecture. Till in this one you please uh, 
play with that setup of controlling a single digit display and you can uh, gain some insight. Uh, having uh, con connected a 7 segment display to the MSP430 microcontroller, we are now ready to uh, evaluate and understand another important uh, aspect of MSP430, one which is a uh, hallmark and a salient feature of MSP430, which is its ability to go from active mode, where all the peripherals, the CPU and everything in the microcontroller is working to your uh, to the maximum uh, capabilities, you can switch from that to a low power mode and there are several low power modes which allow you to conserve power. So, if you find that your application does not need to be active, you can switch on to the low power modes and we will see how many low power modes MSP430 offers and how to invoke them and how to get back from those low power modes into active mode so that you can process information as and when it is uh, deemed necessary. So, we are going to consider the low power modes. The operating modes of MSP430 are 6 in all. The first is the active mode where everything is working, the CPU is working, the peripherals are working, all the uh, clock sources are working, all the clock signals are working. You can choose to route whichever clock signal into appropriate peripherals. But once you are, uh, once you have decided, once you have deemed that in a particular situation you do not want to be in active mode. You can choose various low power modes and there are 5 low power modes and we will see how much power uh, reduction happens in each of these modes and you can choose one appropriately. Uh, we will see how to enter those modes and how to exit those modes. Now, in the active mode if your uh, processor is working, if your uh, system is working, CPU is working at 1 megahertz, then this is uh, these are the uh, uh, operating uh, diagrams from the data sheet of MSP 430 and you see that uh, for 1 megahertz you are going to consume this is the active current and this is the supply voltage. You can go from roughly 1.8 volts to 3.6 volts that when the DCO is working at 1 point 1 1 approximate 1 approximately 1 megahertz the amount of current is this is 1 milliampere. So, this is roughly to 300 micro amperes. So, this is what it is at 2.2 volts supply voltage you can go from 230 micro amperes to at 3 volts it is about 330 micro amperes. And here if the temperature changes then there is a impact on the uh, frequency DCO frequency and the, then you see the current consumption also changes. So, this is as far as the uh, current consumption of a MSP430 in full active mode at various frequencies you can estimate from here. For example, if your system is running at 16 megahertz at 3.5 volts you can imagine that it is going to consume about 4.5 milliamperes at 16 megahertz and that is a significantly small amount of current. So, you should refer to these graphs whenever you have to make estimates as to how much current budget, how much, how much power supply specifications you must provide for, so that your system works uh, flawlessly. If you are not interested in remaining in active mode, then the first uh, uh, low power mode is called LPM 0, LPM stands for low power mode 0. What happens in that? The CPU is disabled, which means you are not executing any program, but some of the peripherals uh, depending upon which clock they uh, choose to use, some of those peripherals can continue to work. Why? Because ACLK and SMCLK are active. MCLK which is the master clock which feeds the CPU is off which means CPU is not working and the supply current at 1 megahertz drops from that 230 micro amperes down to 56 micro amperes. I must uh, reiterate here that because uh, A clock and SM clock are active, the peripherals if you have chosen A clock or SM clock as the clock for those peripherals, those peripherals will continue to work. Beyond LPM 1, LPM 0 you can choose to go for LPM 1. Here also the CPU is disabled, your A clock and SM clock are still active, your MCLK is disabled. Now, what is the difference between ACL, uh, L, LPM 0 and LPM 1? If the first two features are common in both of them, you see here also you have, here also you have. The uh, part is that if the DCO uh, 
the digitally controlled oscillator is disabled if the DC is not being used to power the SM clock. As you know SM clock can derive the clock from DCO as well as the uh, VLO and uh, low frequency crystal oscillator. If you have chosen the S, uh, SM clock not to be sourced from DCO, then the DCO that is the oscillator as well as the DC bias generator for the DC oscillator are disabled and this saves you power. Then you can go to LPM2 in which CPU is disabled. Now M clock and SM clock both are disabled. The DCO can be on the DCO's DC generator remains enabled and the reason why <coughs> why the DC generator is enabled is because the DC generator biases the digitally controlled oscillator. If the bias is on the uh, DCO the DCO can be turned on quickly. The, S, the A clock remains active and the supply current drops to about 22 microamperes. Beyond LPM2 you can go for LPM3, here the CPU is disabled, your M clock and S clock are also disabled, the DCO's DC, DC generator is disabled. Now if the DC generator is disabled, if you want to switch back to uh, active mode, it is going to take some time because first the biasing will be turned on and then the DC oscillator will turn on, it will take some time to come back to active mode. A clock of course remains active which means some peripherals can choose to use A clock for its operation and the supply current drops to a staggeringly low 0.5 microamperes at 2.2 volts. Here we have LPM4 and now the CPU is disabled, the A clock is also disabled, uh, the rest of the clocks are also disabled, your uh, DCO generator is disabled the crystal oscillator is stopped and now you see this is the least power consuming mode where only the contents of the register uh, will be maintained rest nothing is going to work because all the clocks are disabled and your supply current is going to drop to merely 0.1 microampere. Now you can use uh, choose to enter these low power modes using the uh, 4 bits in the status register and these 4 bits are these and we will see how these bits, uh, bit combinations could be invoked appropriately to enter one or the other low power modes. So here we have when all the bits are 0, you are in the active mode and you see this is the contents of the status register and we have always mentioned <laughs> <laughs> that when you reset your microcontroller the status register is cleared which means all the bits in status register are 0 which means after reset you are going to enter in the active mode. After that you can choose if you want to make the enter the LPM 0 mode you make CPU off bit equal to 1, LPM 1 you bit turn this bit on and on and so on and of course your uh, CCS the code comp composer studio allows you many macros to uh, invoke uh, various modes without having to worry about which bits to turn on and off. Now if you enter any of the low power modes, the only way you can get out of it is through interrupts and interrupts will only work if you have enabled the interrupts which means the global interrupt enable flag must be turned on. So you can use either this macro and uh, use it in your code to uh, get out of the low power mode or you can use this combination of uh, command to get out of the low power mode. We will now illustrate this with the help of a code to show this operation. Now uh, we have seen the various modes how to invoke them. Uh, we must uh, put together, uh, we must consider the low power modes and the interrupts together because uh, if the MSP is designed to remain in low power mode uh, for most of the time that is fine if you want to get out of it you must take the support of interrupts and often times the main uh, code will uh, you know program the peripherals to do their job depending upon which low power mode uh, you have chosen. If you want certain peripherals to operate you have to select appropriate clocks for feeding those low uh, peripherals and you have to select appropriate low power modes but if you want to get back into active mode you must turn the uh, general uh, global interrupt enable bit as one 
and then hope that these peripherals can generate an interrupt whenever some action is uh, uh, encountered, so that the processor can come out of the low power mode and into the active mode. Okay, here is a, a code example where what we have done is we are using the peripherals on the lunch box. We are not doing anything else. We, we do not want you to connect anything other than the uh, uh, lunch box to any other uh, uh, you know connection on the breadboard. Whatever is available on the uh, uh, lunch box is suitable. We have one switch which as you know is connected to port 1 bit 3 and we have a LED connected to port 1 bit 7. Now, let us see what we are doing. What this code example shows we and you will have to uh, play with this code uh, and I will show you what part to actually see the impact of this program. What this does is that this program will enter into a low power mode and by pressing a switch that is uh, the uh, switch connected to port 1.3 you can get out of it and let us see what it does. So, first of all whenever we reset we are uh, the first instruction we are executing is to disable the watchdog timer. Then we are turning the uh, port 1.7 bit as output and port 1.3 as input and before that we are uh, turning the LED connected to port 1.7 off. And we have ok this is very important after we have connect con converted after we have uh, decided that port 1.3 pin should be input. We are also enabling the interrupt on port 1.3 in the rising edge mode and we have enabled the interrupt on that pin. So, we have access two registers port 1 interrupt enable and port 1 edge selection register. So, we have decided that whenever the uh, switch is pressed and released at release you will get a rising edge it should interrupt the system. Okay. Then we have a variable declared i, we will see what we are doing with it and then we enter a infinite loop. Outside that here is your interrupt vector, where you are going to go whenever the switch is pressed. Why? Because we have enabled uh, interrupts on port 1 and so whenever the switch is pressed it will generate an interrupt, it will go into the vector and as you see we have gone through that earlier you are saying prag hash pragma vector is equal to port 1 vector. But before that let us see what, what you do here. So, this instruction is very important. Right now this instruction will execute in this what you are doing you are saying bit set in the SR register. So, as to select LPM 4 mode and enable the global interrupts. Now, the moment you execute this instruction the CPU is going to stop which means nothing will happen till you get out of the low power mode, which means next instruction which is here is not going to execute. So, nothing is going to happen on the LED, if the LED was off it will remain off, but if the LED was on it will remain on. The first time around the LED will be off. Now, what happens you press the switch you are going to go into this uh, interrupt and in this interrupt you are uh, exiting from the low power mode, why you are clearing the uh, appropriate bits in the uh, status registers. You are also enabling the interrupts again and you are resetting the uh, bit in the uh, port 1 uh, interrupt register. So, that next time around when uh, the switch is pressed you can again register an interrupt. Now, because of this instruction you are going to go in the active mode which means when you come back here you will execute this instruction which will turn the which will toggle the LED. All right. Now, this instruction which delays is actually superfluous as far as running this code with this instruction active. So, you can play with this and you will see that every time you press the switch it toggles and, but if you comment this uh, instruction, if you comment this instruction out which means interrupts have really no uh, uh, you know you have dis you are not uh, you know turning the interrupts on. So, interrupts are not going to work then the only two instructions in this loop are toggle the LED delay toggle the LED delay. So, in this mode you are going to see 
that the LED is continuously going to toggle when when you comment out this instruction. If you comment out this instruction, rebuild your code and download it, you are going to just see LED on port 1 bit 7 toggling at a rate of roughly uh, you know few times a second. Uh, the switch has no impact because uh, we are not reading it in the main program and the interrupt is not enabled. But the moment you comment out means when you make this instruction active as part of this code, then you will see that the if the LED is on, it will remain on, it is not going to toggle. It is only going to toggle when you press the switch. Why? Because when you press the switch, it is going to enable the interrupts. In the interrupt subroutine, it is going to disable the low power mode, go back into active mode and will toggle the LED and will come back and again enter the low power mode. So, once you press the switch, if, it, if the LED was on, it will be off, it will remain off. Then when you press the switch again, it will again uh, exit the low power mode, go in the active mode, toggle the LED, again go in the low power mode and so on. So, this is an interesting exercise to see how you can uh, play with the low power mode, how you can have external peripherals exit the low power mode. And I strongly recommend that you uh, experiment with this code, especially by playing with this instruction, by commenting this instruction out or keeping it in your code to see the impact. So, we are done with the uh, description of the low power modes as well as how to connect a simple 7 segment display to the pins of a MSP430 microcontroller. In a subsequent lecture, we will deal with timer and other issues. Thank you for watching.